Alright guys, welcome back to the channel, thanks for tuning in on another episode. Um, yeah, how about those diner results, huh? Uh, bit disappointed, um, unhappy, confused, bunch of mixed feelings going on there. Yeah, my initial reaction was, alright, here we are again, Mazda has fibbed and lied about the power output of the another one of their cars. Um, and it's been caught very late that, you know, any lawsuit or anything like that is going to happen. I'm thinking to myself, okay, um, they've lied about the power output of the car. Um, but this time it's in reverse. I do know like one time, like they had like the RX eights, you know, I was thinking somewhere along those lines, but this is like the reverse. The RX eight was putting out less power than advertised. Here you have a Mazda Protege that was putting out more power than advertised, but I think I don't think that's the case here. Though you know I was kind of keeping up with that G37. You know I was. I mean he was ahead, but you know I, I was keeping up with him. But it, yeah, I'm sure I'm absolutely sure he, if he'd have been wide open throttle, I would have. He would have just got smaller and smaller and smaller, and he would have got away. And he wasn't trying. We were only doing you know a little bit over highway speeds, but. Um, I seriously doubt that that was the case. Um, and as a technician, um, I've driven several cars from BMWs to Cadillacs to Chevrolets, Chryslers, Dodges, you name it, other Nissans and uh, Hondas, even other Mazdas that have somewhere around 167 horsepower. Protege doesn't feel as if it had that kind of power. So I was not inclined to believe the results that I'd gotten from that uh, dyno. Uh, uh, that session that day um, yeah I, I, I was a bit flustered by that and because of this experience uh, it led me to do a lot of research on uh, how do you how to uh, get dynos done uh, the type of dynos that are done uh, the method the different measuring methods you know like if it's a, a brake diet a water brake dyno or like dynos that use the inertia method I've kind of read a lot about it um, because you know, I spent some money on that, and um, which is what had me a little bit upset. So, um, but something else I want to point out before I get uh, a little bit further into this video is that um, take this video. I want the viewer to take this video as sort of educational. Um, if you ever want to put your car on a dyno, there are there are alter alternatives. I'll put it that way, and it would be best if you uh, if you wanted to do this. It would be best if you uh, did a little bit of research and edu educate yourself about uh, the different dynometers and the different types of dynometers. Um, second, this video is not uh, made to sort of criticize or down another shop, although um, I do have some some very sharp criticisms uh, after my findings. But I, I will I digress. I won't I won't do that. Um, I, I won't reveal the identity of the shop or the people that were operating the place um, because the video really isn't about that and I don't want to state that you know the operators there are crooks incompetent or both I won't do that um, I'll let the viewer decide that's not that's not what this video is all about but I have some facts about the video um, that I'm gonna put out for you Coming up next, I want you to look at some of the facts that went into um, the video and why it occurred the way it did. Um, so let's get right to it. There were two baseline pulls. The video only shows one because the numbers were exactly the same, therefore it wasn't necessary to show it happened twice. And if you've been on a dyno machine with your car, you'll note that the numbers never ever come out the same exactly the same on the second time so a little bit of a red flag there fun fact number two the baseline pulls were performed in third gear third gear pulls are known to show numbers a bit higher than when in the one-to-one -one gear ratio which is fourth gear in the Mazda Protege and most other cars with manual transmissions fact number three I did not get a paper printout that's right no paper printout I asked for a paper printout that would show the results in greater detail and my request was denied on the basis that the printer for the shop was broken 
I was allowed, however, to take a photo of the screenshot as shown in the video. A little bit of red flag um, on that one. So if you don't get printouts. Um, a lot of people now. I know a lot of people don't like to do printouts, but um, especially nowadays, where like uh, it can be sent to your email or you could take a picture or whatever. But you know that was that option for this older computer was not available. But I didn't get a printout, so a little bit of a red flag there. Um, number four, I did not see the barometric pressure sensor for the dyno machine anywhere. I didn't see that anywhere in the shop. Nowhere near the dyno, nowhere near the computer, nowhere. Fun fact number five, the particular Mustang dynometer was equipped with multiple rollers and used the inertia method for power output measuring. Number six, at the time I filmed this video, I knew absolutely nothing about dynometers, nor did I have any experience with them. The baseline runs was my first experience putting a car on a set of rollers. And fun fact number seven, the Mazda Protégé at the time of the dyno was wearing larger diameter wheels and tires, and this could possibly alter any kind of readings. At the time, the Protégé was wearing 205 40 series rubber wrapped around 17 by 7 inch aluminum. The factory size rollers were 195 55 15 rubbers wrapped around 15 by 6 inch steelies. The aspect ratios for both sizes are as follows. For the 205-4017 combination, the aspect ratio is 23.45 inches. And for the 195-55-15 uh, factory setup, the aspect ratio is 23.44 inches. So the difference between the two is 0 0.01 inches. So not a big difference. Next, I want to turn your attention back to the horsepower curve test screen. The very screen you saw in the previous video that shows what I know to be bogus horsepower output figures. First, the horsepower torque figures are a bit too high for the FSDE in its base trim as my car is only a DX model. And 170 horsepower at the wheels meant at least 200 at the crank. And as far as the maintenance history is concerned from the dealer, that tells me that this engine has never been changed. Also look at where the peak torque is on the engine. Not believable for an engine in a base trim with low compression and cams that have lift and duration so low they don't even qualify to be called mild. These numbers do look possible for a turbocharged engine of the same caliber, the FSDE turbo engine that powered the Mazda Speed Protégé. Let's look at some of the performance figures from autoblog.com and compare them with my horsepower curve test screenshot. You can see the horsepower figures from autoblog.com and the ones from my horsepower curve test screen are very close as far as peak horsepower and torque numbers are concerned, except that these numbers do not match up to the base trim level output figures of 130 horsepower and 135 pound-feet of torque. But if dynamometers measure horsepower at the wheels, the figures are probably wrong anyway. We'll explore this in a bit with some quarter mile trap speed numbers for the base model trim Protégé, the MP3 and the Mazda Speed version. So this brings me to the next fact that I found out about dynometers through a little bit of my research, and that is, dynos don't lie. They only record and measure based upon the information that was loaded into them by the operator. If that information is erroneous to begin with, the end result will be wrong or inflated. So you can see it is not hard to see what the operator did here. Now none of this information is meant to scare you away from taking your car to be dynoed or using a dyno measuring device. In fact, they're best used for ECU tuning, but you're probably wondering at this point, well, what are my alternatives? Well, an alternative to using the dyno would be using a quarter mile drag strip and trap speed calculators to calculate usable horsepower. Now at best, these estimates aren't going to be spot on accurate either, and for several reasons. Light tree response time, tire compound, tire pressures, track conditions, dew point temperature spread are just to name a few, and all these can affect your trap speed times. I would say the best way to use the track and calculators is to try to get three consistent runs and then do usable horsepower comparisons across all three numbers based on the trap speeds. Had I thought about this, I probably would have done this first. Anyway, let's look at the trap speed numbers and quarter mile performance figures for all three trim levels of the Protégé. 
In theory, the claimed 10 horsepower increase the MP3 has over the base model protégés should have shown in a trap speed time of at least 16.4 seconds at 83 miles per hour. This in theory would also mean that the protégé MP3 has 117.6 horsepower at the wheels. However, this is just a calculation, one I unfortunately was unable to prove and likely wouldn't be shown in the results in the second baseline run following the installation of the modified manifold and the MP3 ECU. So does this mean that trying to prove that this modification actually works is a worthwhile pursuit? Absolutely it is. If the MP3 is showing that it is at least 2 or 3 miles per hour faster in the quarter mile sector than the regular base model protege, that certainly to me is worth something, even if I wasn't able to prove it in this series of videos. So that wraps up episode 6 of this series. I really hope you've enjoyed watching these videos as much as I've enjoyed making them. If you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to click that like button. Coming up next in episode 7, I'm going to show you how to make a cheap chin spoiler from some spare parts that will dramatically increase the looks of the front face of the Mazda Protégé right here on Retro Car Style where we make daily drivers better. I'll see you next time.